Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalo from ZK Research, and I'm here at Zenith Live 2024 in Las Vegas. Uh, this is Zscaler's user conference. I'm with Daniel Cha. You're with the Keck uh, Medical at the University of Southern California. Yes, uh, Keck Medicine of USC, yes. Thank okay. you. And uh, just a quick uh, introduction on yourself and what Keck Medicine is. So Keck Medicine is the actually the hospital, call it the hospital branch of the uh, University of Southern California. So it consists of the main hospital, which is in uh, down, in downtown LA, LA yeah. right? And uh, we have uh, several other community, uh, you know, hospitals. Uh, so yeah, we have one in uh, Virginia Hills and one in Arcadia, and then we have another Kansas uh, hospital right next to the main campus. Okay, so we are. This is a security conference, right? There's yes. lots of security nerds down there, right? <laughs> but you're not actually a security professional. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm actually a imaging uh, engineer. I'm the principal for the radiology service line. So my focus is mainly on radiology applications. But I do work very closely with security team. Okay. And uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, this is Zscaler's user event. There's a few thousand people down there, all all learning the latest and greatest. Um, what's your relationship with Zscaler like? Um, you know, it's it's mostly good. You know, uh, because you know we had m multiple issues and Zscaler in, uh, in a couple of situations they step in to help. You know, because you know uh, we had users who are on ZPA, so you know of, obviously when we bring in the, the subject matter expert to help troubleshoot. So yeah, we had a really good experience, and also our users, you know, transition from traditional VPN to you know ZPA. So that was a huge you know change and shift in how they use. Or how their, their workflow, their daily workflow. They used to have to turn on, v, you know, turn on the computer, log into you know VPN, you know, do MFA, log in, and if they have issues, they put in a ticket, and you know, it's it's just a hassle for them. Yeah. Today, they just turn on the computer and start working and start reading the images right. So away. let's talk about the pre-ZPA process and ZPA for those that don't know. Does ZC got a private access? It's a VPN replacement. Um, I think a lot of people in tech think the process of firing up a soft VPN client clicking it, having an MFA push come to your phone really isn't all that hard. Right. Um, but you're, you're not talking about technical people, right? These are doctors and older people. Right. And so what kind of problems would they have and how much, how much did it really, like, do you think it slowed them down from doing their jobs? You know, I, I, you know, it, it varies quite a bit, right? We do have a, you know, very, uh, you know, uh, level of uh, competency of tech, you know, with the radiologists. But yes, you're absolutely correct. They are radiologists, they are clinicians, they are providers. They, they, they want to treat patients. They are not here to learn tech, right? So, um, some, you know, who are more tech savvy, they can figure it th themselves. Or worst scenario for those, they will call, put in the ticket, and call in, you know, for help, and that's it. But for the more ch technical challenge one, they don't even, you know, we, we tell them, hey, go to this corner, we have to provide a screenshot, we have to, pro uh, you know, like, we have to log into the computers, we have to point it out, like, you know, we have to, we have to re-educate them, like, what to look for, what to look out for. So, and, you know, a lot of them, they don't keep this in their memory, so it's like a, it's, you know, ho Groundhog's Day, if you may, yeah, yeah. Uh, every single morning sometimes, you know, and, and they don't work 8 to 5, right? They work, you know, 24-7. Uh, Some are on call, you know, and then, you know, we have urgent situations, you know, patients that need immediate help. So sometimes due to urgency, they can't really focus on, you know, getting the tech to work. So they need immediate help from us. And sometimes they just have to make an appointment with the team to make sure that they can get on the system. No, in timely fashion. So, so that's so we were talking about this uh, pre-recording, and that was kind of an interesting process. You walked me through that. Um, if they were going to access it after hours, the process was so clunky in some cases. They would actually book an appointment with one of your team members ahead of time to make sure if they had problems, there was somebody there that they could help them. Yeah, usually it gives a heads up, right? Yeah. yeah. Either in a form of email, and if they are good enough with tech. They might send us a you know Teams chat like hey um, you know Daniel or hey somebody from the team uh, I'm a, I'm going to be on call from 10 to 11 uh, I I need someone to be to to be on standby just in case I need some help yeah so they do call ahead and let us know yeah. just in case you know they need to grab someone immediately right to, to assist if they run into any issues well, that's a lot of work yeah you yeah. know because you know it is overhead on you know time because we don't we we. They don't work eight to five. They are not on the clock, but we are. So yes, there's you know you know from the HR perspective, from productive perspective, there's overtime incurred, you know and whatnot. So yeah, it's yeah it can be all time consuming for folks to help, and and this is relatively low low level issues too. And this isn't just for people for uh, 
uh, doctors working at home, right? We, again, we were talking sort of pre-recording and for remote medical locations where surgery was being done, doctors that would have to look things up with a patient on the table would often have to take the time and yeah. yeah it's due to the complexity of the healthcare, right? So sometimes the surgeon have to refer a case to a radiologist who's on call and they need to they need to get uh, a, a, an opinion on an image or a study that they're looking for for a patient who is on the table, yes. So when they call, yes, it, it goes it, it, it loops a couple of pr providers, including the radiologist or cardiologist or whichever specialist. And those specialists need access to images. And if those specialists don't have access to images, they cannot be consulted to, you know, to provide, you know, uh, feedback to the surgeons or for the people who are, who needs to look at images, and the patients on the table, right? So yes. Yeah. So next time I'm uh, having surgery, I'm going to insist that they're using uh, Zscaler or ZPA. Absolutely. If they, if they yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so from uh, just from an IT perspective, how much has this helped you? Like, have you seen a noticeable decrease in the amount of support cases and things like that? Yeah, you know, if I would, if this is going to be, you know, kind of like me estimating the volume, but I would say anywhere between five to fifty percent would be the drop of tickets, right? Just and these are, like I said, you know, I call them the busy tickets because they're relatively simple, but yet, you know, it's it's a lot of you know uh, work for us because you know, it, although it's easy for us to resolve, it takes us time to do other things that might be more beneficial for the organization. Yeah, so you have to stop. Yep. and then restart and of course it's not like you can stop a process and then restart and pick up exactly where you were right? exactly and yeah. besides you know when you're in the middle of something and but the radiologist need help like hey this is a patient you know care uh, impact so yes we have to drop everything and to address the issue yeah okay and um uh and then from the uh, the clinician standpoint the doctors have they given you any kind of feedback yeah absolutely you know they, they love zpa and we had one incident where we had do, to do they even know it's running like it's just they know now. Yeah. They know now, you know, because uh, when it's down, they know immediately, oh. oh, my PAX is not working, or I cannot access my images, or I can't do certain things, right? They say, oh, I cannot read, or I can't do certain things. But they know exactly what happened. So, yes, when if, if, they are, they are, if we even ask them to, do, to move back to, you know, traditional VPN for, for a bit of time because we need to do some maintenance on ZPA or what, you know, something happened, they are... They're refusing it <laughs> yeah. because they have lived with, with ZPA so 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 you know so trouble free now you know they, they got spoiled if you may yeah right? but they got used to how efficient it is well, that's a good spoiled yeah 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 and uh, uh, are you using any other uh, Zscaler products yeah we use uh, ZIA uh, and uh, we are we are in the middle of a proof of concept with uh, 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 ZDX so yeah we are looking to. Uh, possibly get mo getting more. I believe uh, our cybersecurity team are looking for other products too. And what are you hoping to learn uh, with the deployment of ZDX? Because it is a very good experience monitoring product. Yeah, I, I think ZDX for us, when we did you know tr recent troubleshooting, you know it, it really helps us pinpoint where the uh, issue is per user case scenario. So it's it's helpful for us because we don't know how the radiologist, you know, each individual clinician's home is like, you know, how they connect it and all that all that stuff. Oh, so yeah. this provides us with a better understanding without having us install additional agent or another application to interrogate a home, you know, how the you know, how the connection is like. So we can through ZDX, I can even tell if they are connected through wireless or right because a lot of users, we we you know in general IT recommends uh, users to connect wire, uh, true wire yeah. connection to you know whatever router they have, but you know, due to homes you know restriction, not it's not always available. Yeah. But we always recommend it. But we can call out a um, you know uh, the radiologist if they are not using you know wireless uh, uh, wired because we can see through ZDX yeah. they are actually using wireless. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. Yeah. In fact, you recommend wired. Um, as you were telling me, uh, well, I'll tell you, how big are the file sizes that we're talking about here? These aren't like Word documents, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> they're huge. They're huge, right? So, um, you know, it, it, you know, for a single X-ray, it could be like uh, seven to eight, you know, megabytes in size. And normally, they don't look at just one X-ray; they look at multiple X-rays. Yeah. But the biggest, you know, uh, what are called consumer of images is something like uh, what a breast tomosynthesis is. You know, a single uh, examination or study is approximately five hundred gigabytes. And when the radiologists read it, they read it with comparison with six other prices or seven other prices. So you're looking at pulling up to seven to eight studies of that size. So, so they're pulling about, three to four terabytes yeah. of data down yeah. in one shot. Yes, yeah. per study. Per and study. this is per read, right? Okay. So imagine if you're reading like 10, 20, 30 patients in, in consecutively, 
multiply that by the well, I can see why you want wired. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, now uh, let's pivot a little bit to the show itself. Uh, yes. What were you hoping to learn here? Why did you come to Zena? No, optimization, you okay. know, and what we, you know, learn from other organizations who have been more mature, you know, how they have been using, you know, uh, Zeke's product, and we know, you know, the uh, the world of uh, security uh, is ever changing. So zero trust, you know, has been you know, pro proving like something we, we, you know, better communication, eliminating a lot of like, uh, uh, you know. Uh, redundant, you know, systems, you know, minimizing your service attack. You know, so there are a lot of good, you know, um, concepts and, you know, like strategy to take back to the team. And, you know, being an application person working with cybersecurity, I have now a better understanding of, you know, some of the challenges that, you know, our cybersecurity team is experiencing. So it's actually good for me to now, you know, get exposed to some of this so I can bring back, collaborate with my team and maybe produce some you know, optimization that's really meaningful for us. Yeah, all right, and uh, so last question, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about this because it's 2024 yes. and we're at a tech show, so you know what's coming, right? Uh, a lot of talk here about AI. Uh -huh. uh, what do you think of it? Does it scare you? Are you excited about it? Are you ready to run for the hills? No, you know, AI <laughs> is a good thing, right? AI is, is a machine that's going to be helping us, right? So in in, in imaging, we, we embrace health uh, AI. Yeah. In fact, imaging is one of the early use cases of AI. Absolutely, right? yeah. yeah. We used generative AI a long, long time ago before it's called generative AI. <laughs> you know, we call it algorithm. But yes, those algorithms are generative uh, uh, based on AIs, right? So, and this year we're implementing a multi million dollar project with actually uh, imaging AI. It's funny yeah, it, yeah. yeah, well, I, it's, I talked to do uh, some doctors at Mass General uh, a couple of years ago about this. And when they first, I'm curious as to how the doctors feel about it, because he said when they first brought it in, there to the MRI lab, the doctors didn't really like it, but then they realized they could, instead of spending 70% of their time looking at MRIs, they spend almost no time because the AI finds things and they can spend more time uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, talking to patients. And are you finding the same thing? Yes, you know, yeah. and, and there, are, there are multiple types of AIs that's used for, um, you know, healthcare. Uh, for us in, in imaging, we use three types, you know, and we're going to implement three types. The first one is what you said. It's an imaging-based AI where the system look for region of interest and it will direct the radiologist's attention to the region of interest. Instead of re reading stacks and stacks of images, they just, they, they get a prompt to go to the image and the region of interest directly. So yes, it saves a tremendous time. Yeah, that's great. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, I think, you know, we covered most of it. Yeah. Know, and thanks, uh, you know, for inviting me. I really appreciate, you know. No, I, I really people. appreciate your time. It's a fascinating use case. And uh, we all, you know, sometimes I think in technology, we forget how cumbersome the stuff we use is. And especially when it comes to security tools, I often find that the mistake we make is we make the user the integration point for the technology. Like you think between soft VPNs and MFAs and things. And if you make the user the integration point, by and large, it's going to fail somewhere. So I, I think with ZPAs, then I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's just made things simple. Absolutely. You know, you simplify yeah. a lot of things. It, it humanized technology, you yeah. know, right? It, it takes the harder things away from them. We want the clinicians to be clinicians. Uh, we don't need them to be technicians. Yeah. The, the, and in fact, as uh, somebody, you know, the next time I need medical care, I, I don't want them missing the technology. I want <laughs> yes. them to focus on Absolutely. The, yeah. And so the best security is invisible security. Yes, so, yeah. absolutely. Correct. So, so anyways, on behalf of Daniel and Zia's Kira Val from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of ECAST.